Welcome back, everyone. In this short video, we're going to take a look at some of the basic anatomy. Not We've already co covered like an overview of the entire uh, urinary tract, but now we're going to just focus a little bit more concentrated on the kidney itself. And then after the kidney, we'll probably go into another video that looks at just the nephron itself, the functional unit, which is more microscopic. So some of the areas that we'll be uh, talking about is going to be the renal cortex, which is the outer layer, and then the renal medulla, which is the inner layer. I'll show you where the renal pyramids are, which is where the secreting apparatus and the tubules are gonna be located. And then I'll show you the renal columns, which is anchored, which anchors the, the cortex itself. So, if we look on the left-hand side, um, you'll see, first of all, on the top there, it says nephron. And part of the nephron is in this outermost portion, which is called the renal cortex, right? That's gonna be from, let's say here to here, this region, but going you know, around the entire kidney, the outer portion. And then we have a renal medulla, and if we look at that, the renal medulla is this darkened region right here. It's the inner part. And part of the nephron we also see go into the uh, renal medulla. The renal medulla tends to be much saltier and more concentrated than is the renal cortex. Now, the renal medulla, this section, because it's the shape like the shape of a triangle, they sometimes refer to that area as the renal pyramid. Okay, between each renal pyramid, we are going to find the renal columns. So the renal columns are going to be this space. Let me see if I can change the pen here just for simplicity. Um, let's make it black here. So from here to here, that column right there, that is referred to as the renal column. Okay, what are some other areas that are important? What you'll see is that the nephron has some moving parts to it. And let's see if I could draw some of that out here. I will do another video where I make it a little bit larger. But let's just say, let's see if I could do this. So let's say we have a larger afferent artery. And then we're going to have this capillary system in here. And then we're going to have a much narrower efferent artery. And now let me change the pen again. Let's make this black. And then around this, we're going to make this capsule called Bowman's capsule. We'll make this convoluted. Again, I'm drawing this very simple just to kind of get you accustomed to some of the terminology that we're going to be looking at. Okay, so what are the name of the different parts of this nephron? And I drew it out kind of quick, but I'll take a little bit more time in a separate video coming up. So we have blood coming in this way, and that's called the afferent arteriole. Blood is coming in through an afferent arteriole into this glomerulus. So I'm gonna put a G here in black for glomerulus. And blood comes in, pretty fast. 
and it exits very slow because look at the diameter of the afferent. It's much, much bigger. And the efferent is a little bit more constricted. So it slows down the time that blood is being filtered, right? You've heard of glomerular filtration rate or GFR. When you go for blood work, it'll say GFR, glomerular filtration rate. So we have blood coming in pretty quick and it's exiting the efferent arterial much slower. So it gives a time for filtrate and for stuff to be filtered out and pulled out into right through this Bowman's capsule into the proximal convoluted tubule. And if there's a proximal convoluted tubule, there's gonna be a distal convoluted tubule. So again, we have blood rushing in through this afferent arterial into this glomerulus and Overall, if we're, we will discuss pressure, but there's more pressure between blood pressure and hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pulling forces pull, pushing in this direction than there is in this direction. So as a result, blood and filtrate are going to be moving through here. So um, you're going to have a lot of waste products and nutrients and water and glucose and calcium and red blood cells. All that is coming through the glomerulus. And there are filtration slits and filtration type of cells that are on top of this glomerulus. And they're just the right size that only some of the impurities and things that the body wants to get rid of can fit through there. We're not going to find protein in your filtrate when you test your urine. You shouldn't find albumin or red blood cells. If we find those things in there, there's some damage. There's a problem. Okay. We're going to find some water, some sodium, maybe some calcium, uh, some vitamins and minerals, things that the body can excrete and secrete out of the body. Um, and then it's going to reabsorb things back in that it wants. Maybe it doesn't want to get rid of calcium. Maybe it doesn't want to get rid of glucose. Maybe it doesn't get, want to get rid of all that sodium. So this is kind of like a two-way street, but if it makes it out this way, now the filtrate is moving through the proximal convoluted tubule down the descending limb of the loop of Henle. This is the loop, right? That's the loop of Henle. Then the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. Then the distal convoluted tubule. And then the collecting ducts. And then right here at the collecting duct, that leads us, as you can see in this picture, here's the collecting duct right there of the nephron. And it leads right into a papillary duct here, right? That opening, I'll do a little black dot. That's the opening, that's the papillary duct. And it leads into a funnel, which we call a minor calyx. So this opening here to here, and this opening here and here, and this opening here and here, those are called minor calluses. And the minor calluses are going to um, converge and find a way into a major calyx, right? This is a much larger area in here. And then the major calluses are gonna find a way to dump into the renal pelvis, which is even more opened and dilated than the, you know, it's like minor callus, major callus, renal pelvis. And then that's going to dump into the ureter, which will store the urine into the urinary bladder. Okay, so maybe a good idea to kind of pause and, and review some of that. Um, so again, we have afferent arterial, efferent arterial, glomerulus. That's the capillary system. The glomerulus is going to have podocytes over it, these uh, cells that create these filtration slits that will only allow certain size particles through there and certain elements through there, certain things it won't. So it returns it back into circulation. So whatever is pulled out is now filtrate. And the body is going to be temperamental. And maybe it says, we're going to get rid of this glucose. We're going to get rid of the sodium and some of this water. 
but maybe along the way, the body changes its mind. It says, you know what? I thought I wanted to get rid of that calcium and that glucose or those vitamins in that water, but the person's fasting. They haven't eaten or drank anything. Let's pull some of it back into circulation. So what surrounds the proximal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, is a circulatory system that they call peritubular capillaries and vasorecta, where it can be a two-way street. It can go from the tubules, and instead of being urinated out, it can go back into circulation. It can be reabsorbed into the body, or it can go from the blood vessels at any part of these tubules that are, that are located near any part of these tubules back into filtrate to be excreted out. So it can be go in either direction. Um, so again, to review some of the connective tissue uh, around it, we have a fibrous capsule which has some anchoring capability. There is some fat that's around there that acts as a little bit of cushioning. There is renal fascia. All of these have anchoring and protecting uh, capability. Um, the lower ribs, like the T11, T12 ribs, they're floating ribs. They could protect a little bit of the kidney. And that's why like during boxing, they don't like kidney punches around the back because it's a vulnerable area. There's not much bone there to protect it. We do have some musculature, the psoas, the chondratus lumborum. When my patients have lower back pain, really I have to differentiate and do a differential diagnosis. Is this musculoskeletal or could it be visceral? Could it be kidneys? Could they be having a UTI? Could they be passing a kidney stone? It's happened so many times over the years, or could it be a kidney infection like that gentleman that had to go on IV antibiotics due to something that was missed uh, in the hospital? Uh, blood supply now, although the kidneys constitute less than 0.5% of the total body mass, it receives about a quarter percent of the resting cardiac output. Okay, that's pretty significant. The nerve supply is uh, the renal nerves, which are carrying sympathetic outflow, fight or flight response. And uh, the sympathetics can regulate blood flow through the kidneys by either dilating or constricting the renal artery and even the afferent and efferent arterioles. When we look at blood flow coming into the kidneys, we can see we would end up having, let's say, let me draw this here. So this would be the abdominal aorta, let's say. And from the abdominal aorta, that's going to lead into the renal artery. And then from the renal artery, we're going to have segmental arteries. And you do have to know this order, right? You want to be able to put these in order. So we have the renal artery, then we have these segmental arteries. And then what we end up having is interlobar arteries. And the interlobars are gonna be found going through the renal columns, okay? So those here and here, these are all gonna be the interlobar. And then the interlobars are gonna wrap around that base of the pyramid forming an arc. So those are called the arcuate arteries. And then right off of the arcuate arteries, going into the cortex, we're gonna have these little small blood vessels radiating into the cortex, so we call them cortical radiate arteries. Now, here's where the magic happens, all right? So right off of that uh, cortical radiate artery, that's where, so I'm gonna go draw a line from here, right from here, it's gonna lead into the afferent arteriole, which is what we have here. And that now this is gonna correspond to what I drew before, where you have an afferent arteriole that leads into the glomerulus, that capillary system in there, and then there's an efferent. So you have one, an afferent arteriole, we have two, the glomerulus, and then we have three, the efferent arteriole. And the afferent arterial is much more dilated than the efferent, so blood can rush in faster, stagnate a little bit, not exit as quick to kind of create it like a drag, you know, so there's a little bit more filtration time taking place to really filter and cleanse. 
So then it leads to the glomerulus and then the efferent arterial. Now, what we have, remember I said surrounding the tubules is a circulatory system in which it could be a two-way street that may be substances from the filtrate that were originally gonna be excreted to urine can now be pulled back into circulation. Well, that's what the peritubular capillaries are for. And then where the loop of Henle is, there is an extension of those peritubular capillaries. Right now it just changes name and it's called vasa recta. So we have the peritubular capillaries or the peritubular veins. We also have that includes the vasa recta. And then now we're going back the opposite way. And now remember you had cortical, um, cortical radiate arteries, there's cortical radiate vein. That comes off the arcuate. So there's an arcuate vein. Then there were interlobar arteries, there's interlobar vein. And then there was a renal artery, there's a renal vein. So it's kind of like the same thing backwards. And it's just instead of artery, it's vein. And then from the renal vein, right? So here's the renal vein coming out. It's gonna go up into what? It's gonna go up into the inferior vena cava. And now you're bringing all that deoxygenated blood back into the right atrium again. Okay, so be familiar with the, uh, with the blood supply. Okay, so uh, again, to review, the outer part is called the renal cortex. The inner part is the medulla. And then when we're looking at the full thing, that's the renal pyramid. Be familiar with uh, right at the end of the renal pyramid, let's say right there at the apex, that's where that papillary duct is. And then that's going, remember the collecting duct of the nephron is gonna lead right into that. And now the filtrate dumps into the minor calyx. And when you have these minor calluses, they're gonna dump into a major callus. So you got minor calyx, major calyx, and then they're gonna dump into the larger portion right there called the renal pelvis, okay? Um, Another name for that little papillary duct, sometimes they just call it the renal papilla right here, both interchangeable terms. That will lead into, after the renal pelvis, that leads into the ureter, and the ureter is gonna find its way into the urinary bladder. Don't forget the renal columns. That's between each of the pyramids. There's a fibrous capsule all the way on the outer portion. And then we also have um, adipose and there's fat that we can find there. So let's look again, just to kind of look at the circulation from the uh, abdominal aorta into the renal artery. After the renal artery, it breaks off into the segmentals. After the segmentals, now we're where the renal columns are, those are the interlobars, okay? After the interlobars, it kind of forms that arc over the pyramid that is the arcuate arteries off the, the arcuate, which is at the base of the pyramid. You have those little arteries, those extensions radiating into the cortex. So it's the cortical radiate. And right off the cortical radiate, that's where we have the afferent arterial, which is going to bring blood into the glomerulus. The glomerulus is kind of housed by the Bowman's capsule. Then you have the proximal convoluted tubule after that. So um, after it's filtered, it goes into the efferent arterial, into the peritubular capillaries. We're in the venule system now, then back to the cortical radiate vein, arcuate vein, interlobar vein, into the renal vein, and the renal vein leads into the inferior vena cava, inferior vena cava into the heart, which is the right atrium. I know I kind of spoke quickly because it's in my head, I know, but it's good to kind of pause, write it out, look at what you're writing and compare it to the image. And then it does, it does make sense. So here, what we're looking at, here is the, um, we don't see the renal artery and we don't see the segmental artery, but after the segmental, we do see the interlobar artery. 
that's in the renal columns. And then we have the arcuate going this way. There's the arcuate. And then off the arcuate, the arcuate we have the cortical radiate artery. And off the cortical radiate artery, that's where we have the afferent arteriole, which leads into the glomerulus. And then right around each glomerulus, like right here, you can see a Bowman's capsule with all the different tubular system, the proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule. And then eventually here is one of the collecting ducts that will lead right here into the renal papilla, into the minor calyx, major calyx, renal pelvis, ureter, into the urinary bladder. The uh, three functions of the renal tubules are to reabsorb some of the useful organic nutrients that enter the filtrate. It can reabsorb more than 90% of the water and the filtrate, right? You don't want to, you don't want to lose all the water that you're drinking. You have to hold on to that. You really do. You don't want the equal amount that you take in that you excrete. We want to hold on to some of that water. But what we want it to secrete is to get rid of some of the waste products the waste products that fail to enter the renal corpuscle through the filtration at the glomerulus want to be able to get rid of that. So when I come back, I'm going to draw out the nephron again for you and uh, go over a few other details.